Ah, we are back yet again for another week of all of the college football underdogs. It is the show that is devoted to the teams that are lesser thought of, the teams that are usually the road team, not given much of a chance. But then again, we love that about those underdogs. It is Three Dog Thursday. I am the somewhat capable, somewhat competent host, TJ Reeves. I've enlisted the help of a colleague from BetUS TV, also goldboys.com and all of the coverage with handicapping all kinds of sports. But we want to lean on the college football knowledge of Brad Thomas, who is is not far from where I am in West Central Florida. He's in Central Florida in Orlando. He is a displaced Buccaneer brother from another mother. 2-0 2-0 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yes, let's as go. Talk, as we talk NFL for 4.9 seconds. <laughs> Good to have you on Three Dog Thursday, my friend. Thanks for having me. You know, what's kind of funny is I was uh, I was missing doing these. Uh, for the NBC football show, we do uh, Moneyline Sprinkles. And, man, we've been kind of – I've been kind of doing well. So Good. This, this is a good practice for literally anyone who – who bets often but doesn't like handicap it full time or sure. semi pro whatever they call it because naturally our brains want to bet favorites they're favorites for a reason but when you really start digging into the lines and you start trying to find underdogs you can find flaws in teams and start getting value by getting points and that's what this man does so again he's been on this show in the previous incarnation when we were doing it on bet us tv we're now with gary seegers and everything with winning cures everything.com the winning cures youtube page all of their outlets and social media. Again, Gary is putting some content up. Brad, I don't know, I don't know how much you know about this, but this is the second straight week he's not able to do the show with me. Why? Because his wife gave birth to Gary's oh, wow. third child, their second child together, uh, baby Murphy Jean on the planet now for about nice. 10 days of the college football season. So Gary's uh, sleep patterns, he, helping his wife, the whole bit. It's just not conducive right now for him being on this program with me. So I enlist folks nothing but the help, whether you're just seeing us on winningcureseverything.com and their platforms, whether you're hearing us on the Three Dog Thursday uh, podcast through Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify, etc. If you're only hearing us, come find the video show, winningcureseverything.com, Winning Cures, the YouTube page. You'll see what Brad and I look like. Brad's got the best quaff in, in handicapping, <laughs> I think. Uh, and I got so much to talk to him about. So anyway, thank you for finding us. All the disclaimers out of the way. We're going to start handicapping college football underdogs against the number in a couple of moments. We are going to talk Ole Miss and Alabama uh, for this week. But before we get there, you were in my neck of the woods. Yes. You we're in Raymond James Stadium for Alabama and USF, South Florida out of Tampa. It was a game, honestly, I and everybody else, I think you two thought that Alabama would roll in this game. And lo and behold, for a myriad of reasons, it's a 3-3 game (laughs) late in the third quarter. So straight to you, what do you make of that last week? And how concerning is that for the Crimson Tide that they struggled, including a late garbage touchdown in the final 30 seconds, to push it to a 17-3 game? It was a 10-3 game, basically. (laughs) How concerning is this? I think the public is more concerned than Alabama fans. Um, You know, when Jalen Milrow threw two picks against Texas, lost the game, Nick Saban's hand was forced. A lot of people said Milrow did enough to earn the job, but had Alabama stuck with Milrow through the rest of the season, let's say they fell short of a New York Six Bowl, and all the fans would be asking, what if? What if Tyler Buckner was the real deal? What if... Ty Simpson was the answer. Why not roll those guys out against South Florida, a team that you know you can keep off the board? Had it not been for a muff putt, they probably wouldn't have scored. Um, I wasn't concerned, not even in the slightest. I think the panic, it while warranted, I think it's overblown a little. Nick Saban literally just used that as a glorified practice and tryout for his guys to get live reps. Now he knows Jalen Milrow is his guy and he doesn't have to answer any of those questions. Well, I don't think what people are talking about enough though is Alabama went on the road, played in a rain game against Mm -hmm. a road team. I don't care. It's still D one. It's not an FCS school and held them to three points. You could talk about, well, it's South Florida. Uh, We have Michigan giving up touchdowns to Bowling Green. Uh, We have them giving up points to other teams. We have Ohio State giving up points. Like it, 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 and I only use the Big Ten just because we're covering that so much with NBC. I'm not trying to pick on them. Um, But big teams give up points on the road. 
Uh, and so for them to, to, to bunker down defensively, I was uh, pretty impressed with that. Uh, it was a terrible game to be at in terms of an Alabama fan and as a better, um, I luckily was able to recoup some money by betting on them live late in the game. And when they scored that pointless <laughs> touchdown, uh, but it, it definitely did not. It wasn't, make po- up. It, won, it wasn't pointless to Brad Thomas and a lot of people that had bet it live to get yes. the one last touchdown there to make the spread uh, 14 there at the end with the extra point. Right. It wasn't pointless yeah, at that point. It wasn't pointless to me. I, I, I don't put too much stock in it. Now this week, uh, this will be a true test mm. because if, if Texas is as real as we think they are, and the way they played, Alabama had a chance to win that game. I went into the Texas game not even thinking we had a chance. We took the lead. My hope was, while well, it was short-lived, I had hope to win. Now, if, if the same thing happens to Ole Miss, Alabama might be in trouble this year. But uh, long-term, they should be more than fine. The youngest the youngest starting lineup in, in the SEC, uh, they'll only get older and better. All right, so we'll talk more about Ole Miss and Alabama. Again, Brad and I will each – select three underdogs we should mention last week colby dant was with me from the college football experience uh podcast colby and i came up short the only thing that we really got together was florida trouncing tennessee uh i I would have loved to have known that rashada the arizona state quarterback was not playing on three dog thursday we didn't know that until game night they withheld it for the fresno state game and they were never in it and then the backup quarterback got hurt right away i'm not making excuses but we're, we're on a third string quarterback like the second series of the game. So that was down the toilet on Arizona State at home with Fresno. I know uh, Colby was bemoaning Utah State on Friday night against Air Force. Total no show in that one. So what I'm saying, peeps, is Brad's going to keep me straight here. We're going to yes. be better with the underdogs today. Uh, and, and on this show, as we head towards Saturday, Brad will do the best with that. To that end. Why don't you lead us off? And you mentioned the Big Ten. You are looking Big Ten doggy right away on this uh, now fifth college football Saturday, what's considered week four, but we had a week zero. Uh, You're going to begin with a Big Ten underdog. Tell me who it is and why. I'm taking Iowa plus 15 um, at Penn State. Yes, I know before everyone gets up in arms, it's the whiteout game for Penn State. The crowd is going to be electric. Penn State doesn't always dominate in wideout games. I think it's overblown a little bit. Only 10 and 8 um, in wideout games since the, the start of them. And uh, Iowa plays so well at, at Beaver Stadium. I think it's something around like 6-1, 6 3 and 1 against the spread in their last nine. But without without worrying about the trends, uh, I'm not a huge trend better. I, mm-hmm. I, I like to bet what happens on the field. I was the first person to the window. Uh, to bet on Penn State last week. A little fortunate to cover the 15, uh, 15 and a half line. Can we talk not... about that for a second? I had yeah. Illinois and I thought the back door was open late. Yes. I mean, Penn State clearly outplayed them. Uh, and again, uh, the starting quarterback gets hurt after all the interceptions. They've got the backup quarterback yeah. in, but they got the ball with like two minutes left. And Brad, I'm thinking the back door is open <laughs> on a plus 14 and a half off three dog Thursday. I had Illinois. Yeah. But you turned out to be good there. They covered that double digit and then some line did the Nittany Lions continue on. Yeah, I uh, I felt fortunate to cover that offensively. Um, and I don't want to take these words from uh, the What's the Spread co-host Miles Markowitz, but the offense is not quite what we were expecting when Drew Allard was going to step in there, right? Uh, still working out the kinks, the double-headed monster of Katron Allen and, and Nick Singleton. They're great. Um, but you know, they're still young. What's really the scary part about Penn state is how great their secondary was and is, well, I'm not worried about that because I think that this Iowa team is going to hang their hats on pounding the rock and staying in this game defensively. Iowa while losing Jack Campbell, still managed to have one of the top five defenses in college football. They know that even with Cade McNamara struggling a little bit last week, he gives them the best chance to manage the game. Who would have thought that an Iowa quarterback comes in as a game manager? I think that's their best pathway to victory. I don't know if they're going to win, but you're telling me more than two touchdowns you have to lay against a defensive battle. If Iowa scores first, the pace of this game is going to go down 
so much. We know there's no stopping clock with the running clock. I'd imagine if Iowa can get the lead, they're going to limit the possessions for Penn State. And I don't know if Penn State is going to have enough firepower to cover 15 points. All right, fair enough. And again, that's going to be a night game on CBS. I was there at night doing national radio for the West Virginia game with LeVar Arrington, and you know him, Brad, the former yes. Penn State great defender. Uh, they were playing at night. They were frothing at night. They were good defensively. Aller did enough, had a couple of big pass plays to Keandre Lambert-Smith, a little speed receiver. They do have the two-headed monster at running back. Very interesting that Iowa gets 15 in the matchup with Penn State. I'm going to go back to earlier in the day for my first underdog here on Three Dog Thursday as we hang with Brad Thomas filling in for Gary Seegers on the Winning Cures Everything platforms. We're on their YouTube page. We're on the podcast here. Every Thursday we're here giving you college football underdogs. And Brad, as we like to joke, they're, work, they're worth every penny you're paying for them. <laughs> so last week they were worth this zero that I'm holding up. Just keep that in mind, folks. You're not having to pay for these picks, and usually they're pretty good. Two weeks ago, in fairness, Gary and I were 5-1 and one Ooh, on the 6 nice. underdogs. So we have a standard to live up to. I want to go earlier in the day. I want to go Black Knights of the Hudson, playing not far from the Army West Point campus in Syracuse. And I'm always going to call it the Carrier Dome, even though it's got another name now. For 45 years, it was the Carrier Dome. This is the Dome on the Syracuse campus. That's where they're playing. This is a noontime game. This is an Army team off of a win over Texas San Antonio. UTSA last week on Friday night is like a nine-point, eight-and-a-half, nine-point dog. They have a different offense now, Brad. I don't know how much you've been looking into them. No longer the triple option. They yeah. spread people out. What is this? Army running four and five <laughs> wide receivers. Whose college football is this? Uh, Bryson Daly is the quarterback. He can throw it. He's already thrown for almost 500 yards in their first three games. Uh, he was good in that UTSA game. I just, I like them here. I know it's back-to-back -back games on the road where they have to go get this done. But I like Army here because it's not often you get them as a double-digit underdog this is only the third time in the last three seasons that army's been a double digit dog it tells you how good they've been yes. now now wake forest brad wiped them out last year as a double digit dog two years ago 2021 they beat wisconsin as a double digit dog that's the only two times they've been a double digit underdog right now in two plus seasons i will take those points yes syracuse beat purdue in their last game the first two wins are kind of suspect i know army lost the opening game with louisiana monroe but i think they've improved i think they will hang in i don't know that they win that's an early game at syracuse do you have a quick 30 second take on my army take here on three dog thursday yeah, I was on Syracuse last week and I was lucky to cover another one of those. Uh, they allowed over 400 yards of total offense to Purdue. I feel like you can't, that's not sustainable. You're not going to keep winning and covering if you're allowing teams to move up and down the field and just relying on turnovers to uh, kind of stop the opponent. All right. So uh, again, we each have an underdog. Now we already talked a bunch about Alabama. Let's talk a little more about their matchup with Ole Miss. There's the, the smack has been flying from Lane Kiffin, the former Bama offensive coordinator, now the head coach at Ole Miss. Well-traveled. He obviously was the Florida Atlantic coach. He before that was the Tennessee head coach. Uh, interesting that Ole Miss comes in 3-0, and 3-0 and ATS. This is their biggest challenge to date, though. This is at Tuscaloosa. Uh, you know, student against the teacher. You already laid out Alabama struggles last week. You're handicapping this for Three Dog Thursday purposes. Are you going there with the Ole Miss Rebels? Yes, I am taking Ole Miss. I got it at plus seven. I don't tease spreads in college football often. I thought this was a great teaser leg because it was tough for me to see Alabama winning this by two touchdowns. This is one of those situations, if you're a stats better, um, I'd consider myself a stats better, mixed in a little game film. Uh, this is a hard one to just look at the numbers and see what's really happening. Why? Because you have their first game against Middle Tennessee State for Alabama, what, 50-something to zero, and they looked unstoppable. Then Texas, and then they're trying different quarterbacks. So, yes, their EPA margins are going to be different. Yes, their offensive success rate's not going to be cohesive uh, or, or correlate to how they're actually playing, but... The things that you see on the field worry me are is the lack of pressure on the quarterback 
number one. Uh, and that's outside of Dallas Turner. Dallas Turner obviously is doing a good job of that. And number two, the lack of protecting the quarterback. Um, with those two things, it, it can keep anybody into a ball game. This might be the best Ole Miss team that uh, Lane Kiffin had some time and probably the worst team that Alabama's had some time. Uh, I know that Lane Kiffin is it didn't cover uh, his last trip to Bryant Denny Stadium, but I just think the spread is just a little too big. It opened up at 11 and a half and obviously mm. uh, was bet down. But for me, just what we're seeing on the field, that's all we can all we can base it on. I think there's too many points in this game. If Alabama wins, it's probably going to be a, a field goal game. Interesting that the Crimson Tide have been so good at home in conference. Uh, they did lose to Texas out of the conference. The last in-conference loss is Joe Burrow, LSU 2019. They've won a bunch since then. Uh, they obviously beat Ole Miss a couple of years ago. I did that game on national radio. It was close in like the first quarter, and then Alabama yes. went off like 35 points in a row, as you remember, Brad. Yep. Uh, we'll see. It's a different Tide team here. Uh, they, they had trouble protecting the quarterback against USF last week. It'll be very interesting, but a lot of people looking strongly at Ole Miss and Brad Thomas says, let's take them for his second underdog on three dog Thursday. I love Brad's insight. Stand by for a second, Brad, because I got to tell the folks about ticket smarter and the ticket smarter mobile app. If you're trying to get into that game at Bryant Denny stadium, with tickets on the secondary market, use our friends at ticket smarter because they've got the most competitive prices on the secondary market. They've got a great algorithm that keeps you in line with what the best prices are. Your purchase is safe. It's secure with Ticket Smarter and their mobile app. And we've got a promo code. If you're trying to get in for Ole Miss and Alabama, you're going to pay over $100 for the get-in price right now. For the really good seats, you're looking at four or 500 bucks at least per ticket. So use our promo code WCE for Winning Cures Everything. WCE20. Get $20 off your $300 order. With Winning Cures Everything's offer through Ticket Smarter, take 20 bucks off. This is good for any of these college games. We're going to talk about Notre Dame and Ohio State coming up here in just a little bit. If you're trying to get into Notre Dame Stadium, the get-in price is like $400 <laughs> per ticket. Use the promo code on Ticket Smarter, WCE20. You get 20 bucks off your order of 300 or more. Uh, the Colorado Buffaloes at Oregon. If you're going to Outson Stadium in Eugene, if you're going to the Rock in Death Valley for Clemson and Florida State, wherever, use that promo code. Use Ticket Smarter. Uh, and again, this is good as many times as you want to use it. Use that promo code. It's good for college football, the NFL, concerts, Major League Baseball playoffs, whatever you want to do. Use Ticket Smarter, the Ticket Smarter mobile app. As they like to say, get in the game, think smarter with Ticket Smarter, and the promo code is WCE20, 20 bucks off a purchase of $300 or more. We should make mention, because you're going to talk Notre Dame and Ohio State, you're going to travel this weekend. Just lay it out for us on the itinerary, and you're going to take in not one but two big-time games in the Midwest Friday and Saturday. Real quick, go ahead, Brad, and tell them more. Yeah, so Friday, I will be in West Lafayette, uh, Wisconsin at Purdue. Um, look for me on the field. I'll, I'll be there uh, taking my pictures, taking my notes, and then we will travel to South Bend for Ooh. Saturday's clash. Ohio State at Notre Dame on the field as well, taking notes, taking pictures, uh, enjoying the atmosphere. Yeah, go check him out on social media, Mr. Brad Thomas. Are you the same on Instagram as you are on Twitter? On Instagram, or I'm obrad, O H H. B R A D. All right. So, oh, Brad, uh, check out the photos. He's going to, you're going to be on the field at Notre Dame Stadium. Ohio State has not been there since I keep quoting this 1996. Bill Clinton's second term uh, in the White House had not begun yet. He had not been reelected yet. It was coming later that year, that fall, uh, the last time the Buckeyes were there against uh, Notre Dame. So, uh, how about that? Uh, and so now here they are 27 years later playing there. We're going to talk more about that game coming up, but that's a great doubleheader to go to those two games oh, in yeah. West Lafayette and in South Bend. All right. I owe the public another underdog. Uh, I am going to go all the way out West to Washington state and the matchup with Oregon state. I think this has got a chance to be a sneaky good game uh, in the pac 12 here. Uh, Wazoo, a team that I already backed for their upset of Wisconsin. You were just talking about Wisconsin earlier. Uh, now they'll play an Oregon State team. I went against them early on in the year, and they blasted San Jose State on week zero, uh, uh, annihilating them uh, actually the second weekend, Labor Day weekend on the Sunday, wiped them out in San Jose. Uh, of course, they've got DJ Uwe Ungalale, the former Clemson quarterback, at the controls. 
I just, I like Washington State in the spot at home. Pac-12 home doggies have been good for a lot of this year. I like them as a home dog, but this is a fascinating matchup because these are two teams that are contenders in the last year of the Pac-12, as we know it. They're contenders in the Pac-12 North to maybe be in the title game. Brad, a quick thought on this one where, where Arizona, or I'm sorry, where Washington State's getting three, two and a half or three at home with the Beavers. Yeah, I was on that uh, Wisconsin game. I, I was on Washington State uh, uh, plus the points and the money line. It was a great ticket for me. Great uh, to kind of boost our show there. But it, it, like you said, it, it's hard to play in Pullman. It, it's hard to play against Cameron Ward, who is quietly a Heisman, legitimate Heisman contender. And why I say quietly is because he's putting up these great numbers. If he can continue to have the success that he's going to have, he could find himself in New York uh, at the end of the season. But yeah, it, it's just the home advantage. I, I think they're gonna it's going to play, play pretty big. And um, I, I'm going to be quick on this. Washington, uh, Oregon State, the last few years have hung their hat on their defense. Their defense hasn't been great this year. Um, that is really going to be their Achilles heel throughout this season is if they can't get back to that norm of playing great stout defense, then a lot of teams are going to beat them, especially on the road. Again, they are 3-0. and They beat San Diego State last week. Washington State clobbered Northern Colorado 64-21 to for whatever that's worth. Again, this will be a game coming Saturday late afternoon in the Palouse. It will be a 4.30 local time game, uh, 7.30 Eastern time for that matchup. All right, so that's two underdogs from each of us. You mentioned Notre Dame and the matchup here with Ohio State, and I believe we are together in this one on an underdog. You begin. Why are you looking strongly at the Irish for Three Dog Thursday purposes, Brad Thomas? Yeah, so for those who don't know, I, uh, I've i been tasked to be a Notre Dame analyst for the season. So this one team where I cover them uh, extensively, not only, uh, not only the team, but players um, by position. When I was breaking down this game, I, I at the beginning of the year, I imagined that Ohio State would have no problem with this game. And then as the year progressed, we're only in five weeks of the football season. Right. But as it progressed, I started to know something different about this Notre Dame team. We knew they were going to have one of the best offensive lines in the country. We knew that their defense would be better, but they're playing complete football. And what I mean by that is Audrey Estime is running the ball very well. Sam Hartman is throwing the ball very well. And their wide receivers, uh, Great House, Thomas, and Tyree, all are dangerous weapons. If I were to set this number, I would have set it closer to a pick em. The book set it at six and a half, and the number just kept dwindling down and dwindling down. When I started my write-up for this game, it, it was at five and a half. And my first line of the write-up said, we are out of our minds if we <laughs> think Ohio State is just going to waltz into South Bend and beat them by six or more. And it's no knock on Ohio State, and it's not saying that Notre Dame are world beaters, but these two teams on paper are much closer than people might want to admit. Last year, I was at that game uh, in the shoe, and the score, the the box score does not indicate what happened in that game. It was a dogfight throughout the entire game, which I think this is going to be as well. Notre Dame's getting healthier, getting three starters back on this team, and Ohio State While Kyle McCord looked like a Heisman contender against Western Kentucky, this is not Western Kentucky. This is Notre Dame. And by me saying that I'm taking Notre Dame is no knock on Ohio State, but you have a young quarterback going to play on a hostile road game at night, and you're giving me points with two teams who I think this could be a coin flip. There's too much value to pass up. I took Notre Dame. Grab those points, as we like to say, for Three Dog Thursday purposes. I'm going to agree with you here. Uh, I love the spot for Notre Dame. Rarely, rarely are they a home underdog. They were a home underdog one time last year. Now, a lot of that is they're playing cupcakes. They're playing Central Michigan. They're playing Tennessee State like we've already seen this year. They were a home underdog one time. They beat Clemson decisively and covered. They were not a home underdog in South Bend two years ago at all. The one quote-unquote home game where they were an underdog was against Wisconsin at Soldier Field in Chicago, and they won that game outright. So it still counts as a pseudo home uh, dog cover, even though it wasn't Notre Dame Stadium in South Bend. And that's it, the last two years. 
Interesting in the last 10 years, Notre Dame, for what it's worth, Marcus Freeman was not the coach for the last nine years before last year. Uh, in the last 10 years, they're 6-2 and two as a home underdog. ATS, 6-2 and two for whatever that's worth. I like them in this spot. The magic of that place, early season, it's going to be amped. We talked about how tough the ticket's going to be. Ohio State will probably have 10,000 people there. They might have more than that. We'll see if the Scarlet and Gray is there big time. I just like Notre Dame. Too many points, so I agree with Brad on this one for Three Dog Thursday. We're about to wind it down and be done for this week. I cannot get out of here without asking two more that neither one of us are going to take officially. Colorado, what a story. Say yes. something real quick about the story and then morph it into, can they hang in as a 21-point doggy with Oregon? Say something about what they've done so far, yep. and do they hang in Saturday afternoon in Eugene? My entire life, I've been a college football fan uh, since I've been a little kid. And the story, the things that make college football special are the stories, uh, the impacts that players uh, and coaches have on the programs. Deion Sanders not only having an impact on the program, he's having impact on college football. It has been a great story. I'm really excited for him as a coach, um, him even if you want to say he has theatrics, whatever, he gets these players excited to play. With that being said, I, if I were to bet it, I would take Colorado plus 21. Mm. Um, I just think that, yes, they have issues at defense. Yes, they can't run the ball, but they have Shadur Sanders and they have the most important thing that any college football program needs. And that's belief. They believe in themselves. They believe that they can beat any opponent. Oregon, a tough out. And that is no lie, but when you have that belief and you have a quarterback who's playing great, I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think. Well, we'll see. I mean, it's the best offense they played, better than TCU, yep. Nebraska. I mean, Colorado State's been bad, and Colorado State moved the ball on them. And what a phenomenal game. Amazing uh, drama for that one in the middle of the night and, and amazing ratings where ESPN in the middle of the night had over 9 million people on average watching. They had over 8 million people still watching in the 2 a.m. Eastern time hour. I was not one of them. <laughs> I had gone to bed. Old man TJ had to work the NFL Sunday, as you know, with the yes. Buccaneers and the Bears. So I had to relive that one on the DVR. They had over 8 million people watching at 2 a.m. for the great comeback and the double overtime. Um Again, love hate thing with Coach Prime with Dion. It's bringing in eyeballs, and this will yep. have some eyeballs Saturday afternoon. I just don't know that they hang in. You and I kind of differ. One more as an honorable mention: Clemson hosting Florida State. Florida State looked impressive for like two and a half quarters against Boston College. Let them back in the game. Jordan Travis had a big game. Clemson now with an opportunity to regain some credibility that they lost in the opening loss to Duke. I, I did not take this officially, but if there was a fourth underdog, I was looking strongly at Clemson at home with Florida State. 30-second take from you on that one, Seminoles at Tigers early in the ACC. I'd probably take Florida State, and it's not necessarily because I think there's value in it, which is why I didn't bet it. I don't think there's value. But this is probably the best Florida State team we've seen since their national championship run. Uh, they're explosive on the defensive line. Uh, Johnny Wilson uh, looks fantastic. Keon Coleman, a great addition. And their running game is good. And you said it. They're led by uh, one of the most efficient quarterbacks in college football. Uh, lack of explosiveness for Clemson uh, also plays a part. It's one of those bets where if you don't think there's value and you go with Florida State just because they're the better team on paper, you can't be mad if you lose. You can't be mad if it's a one-point game and you don't cover. Is it the big equalizer, though, at Death Valley where that place can rock? Absolutely. Let's Absolutely. see. Let's see. And it's early. It's not a night game. It's an early noon game, Eastern time, Saturday, Clemson and Florida State. We have given you so much here on Three Dog Thursday. Let's recap it one more time, what Brad Thomas and I are on uh, here for this week. Brad's going to go Big Ten doggy with the Iowa Hawkeyes. He also loves Ole Miss against Alabama. He and I are agreeing on Notre Dame at home as a doggy with Ohio State. Again, the Buckeyes' first matchup coming in there uh, is since the mid-1990s. It's been a while since they have played in South Bend. My other two underdogs, uh, once again, I like Army early at Syracuse, getting a ton of points. You rarely get them as a double-figure underdog. I go all the way out west to the Palouse, to Washington State with Oregon State, and take a few points there in that one as well. And there you go. 
Three underdogs from each of us. One is the same. Five total underdogs. One is the same. Notre Dame for both of us. Brad Thomas, any thoughts in closing here before we go to another college football weekend this weekend? Um, last weekend, we didn't have ranked matchups. Now we have a mm. ton. Get ready mm. to see some upsets. But guys, remember, do not overreact. Good teams will look bad and bad teams will look good. It's all about picking the right bets. And it's early on in the year for some of these that are going to maybe take a loss. Don't write them off completely yes. like what you're saying for the rest of the year. Now, it's interesting for Alabama because they were hanging on the high wire last week. They're hanging on the high wire with Ole Miss. And for the rest of this year, for the college football playoff I'm talking about after that yeah. loss to Texas, we'll see. But, I mean, teams like Notre Dame and Ohio State, whoever loses, it's only one loss, exactly. and it's to a really good team. So, And I know what you mean when you say that. Let's see what happens and don't overreact. We love it. Brad Thomas, thank you. We bow to you. We'll watch you on BetUS TV. He covers the world sport, the football yeah. with the round ball. He does that a bunch. He fills in and does a bunch of football as well on BetUS TV, American football, the oblong one <laughs> with the helmets and shoulder pads. Also, goldboys.com, correct, Brad? Yes, absolutely. We'll find you there for the content. Have a blast for Wisconsin and Purdue in person in West Lafayette. And then I'm profoundly jealous of Buckeyes Notre Dame. I got to hear yes. all about that. Oh, yes. Have fun with both of those, brother, and thank you for filling in. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. This was a blast. There is Brad Thomas. I'm merely TJ Reeves. Again, it's winningcureseverything.com, our platform, Winning Cures Everything YouTube page. Find the podcast as well. If you're only watching us, you can take us with you on podcast under Three Dog Thursday, wherever you get podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify, Google Podcasts. If you're only hearing the podcast, again, come see the video show, Winning Cures YouTube page, winningcureseverything.com. Gary Seegers, hang in there, brother, with the new baby and wife, <laughs> Jess. You guys hang in there. We got an able fill in again here with Brad Thomas for this week. Brad, thank you, and we thank you for watching and listening to Three Dog Thursday.